everyone. Welcome to It Matters Radio. This is Monica Brinkman, and I'm going to be your host for this evening. And along with that, we have Mr. Kenneth Lean as our co-host today. Hi, Ken. Hi, Monica. How are you? And Monica, I have a friend with me. Uh, folks uh, have watched previous shows, have met Thackeray, my stuffed sloth. But oh. this is another one of our family. This is Michael Mayer Bloomberg. We call him Bloomy. He's also a sloth, as you can see. And when my wife and I got up this morning, we noticed that Bloomy was very happy. Oh. And he, he said he had an announcement. Now, those of you who are into politics know that Mayor Bloomberg invested half a billion dollars, that's $500 million, in his bid for the Democratic nomination for right. the president of the United States. Right. That didn't work out too well. No, it didn't. She had a few tears here. But he did do very well in one place. He swept, swept, I say, American Samoa, which gave him five Samoans. And when you have these Samoans and you don't know what else to do, well, you celebrate Samoa. Why not? <laughs> so this morning we woke up and learned that there is now a sixth Samoan. Oh. One of the Samoans gave birth. And, and this is a very good thing because, you know, uh, Bloomy is slot and so counting to five is somewhat problematic you know, one two three then what but yeah, now six is much easier because he can use both hands one two three four five and six and so he's very happy and he would like is because he thinks that he should be president of the united states he would like everybody to join him in celebrating the birth of the new samoan by going out and buying chocolate bars, um, marshmallow, and graham crackers, hey, and having tamales. I don't need an excuse, Ken, to buy chocolate. Believe me. <laughs> I love it. But thank you so much, and congratulations. <laughs> okay, folks, uh, as you may have noticed, we have a wonderful gentleman here with us. And you may have seen him on previous shows because we showcased his music and some of his artists. This is Mr. Steven Wrench. He's with Music and Film. And he's also one of the best lyricists I have ever met in my life. And I know that he won't say that, but I am. So hi, Steven. Nice to see you. Hi, Monica. Hi, Kenneth. Nice to meet you. Hi. You know, Stephen, I think one of the biggest questions that we have right now during this virus that is attacking the entire world is what do you as a manager and also as an artist see as far as um, getting music out to the public right now because it's very dangerous to be in crowded places. What kind of ideas do you think we can come up with or have been used or you plan to use? Well, one of the things that I've found is music and film does worldwide radio promotion. And we also do billboard campaigns that are very expensive. And the major labels haven't done any new releases in the last three months. They don't even know when they are going to because they're shut down because of the pandemic. So normally when I submit to media base or billboard reporting stations, we get ignored. I've got several artists we're doing radio campaigns for now that have picked up anywhere between 10 and 40 billboard reporting stations, almost enough, in some cases, enough to put them on the billboard charts. Wow. I've never seen happen in a long career. I've never seen this happen because they're starved for content and they don't have the majors releasing it. So, gee, they're going back to real talent, putting real talent on the air instead of who pays them the most. So and if anybody wants to get heard, now's the time to get heard. And I've also read, and I know that radio listenership is way up and the amount of radio stations I'm clients are doubled 
what they used to be. So if you want to get heard, that's one way. I've also got some artists that have utilized Facebook and other means for live concerts that have done very well. And some of them that promoted them well, some of them that didn't, but all of them have done well. They've gotten anywhere. Most of them get about 2,000 at least viewers on there. Wow, which that's great. They want. And you these know, Ken was talking about um, in his community, can you might want to tell us how they're using okay. drive-ins and yeah yeah one of the things that i know the other day they had one in new hampshire we had one here last week a uh, local mission from the community took over the parking lot put up a stage spaced out parking so people were five feet apart not regular parking mm -hmm. and uh had a cover band come and they uh served pizza and drinks People pay, and it was sold out. In fact, I had told a friend about it, and he wanted to go. And this was a couple of days before. And when he called up, they said, "Oh, well, we'll put you on the waiting list for the next one because um, we're already sold out." So it really got tremendous support. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting idea. And of course, I love you know when I was a kid, I loved driving movies. Oh yeah. I think that's great, and um, I think Stephen was telling me that, um, they like troubadours, right, Stephen? That's the thing to do. A century ago and more, they traveled around and just played for who would listen. It didn't matter if it was three people or 300. It was an audience. And all these bands that are doing this on YouTube or Facebook, whatever, People think that it's enough just to stream their music or become a fan, but that gives them a tenth of a cent. People, anybody listening out there, these people are starving to death if they make yes. their living. Please, I mean, if you're going out to a bar, you're going to spend 20 bucks. Tip them. Tip them generously. Don't give them a dollar. I mean, come on. Would you go to work for a dollar? I mean, if you like their music and if you're sitting home streaming it and enjoying it, give them 10 bucks. Give them 20 bucks. If there's an app for it, absolutely. Yeah, well, I think they should. They, I think these bands need to have that when they are, go, are go. on the internet, when they are doing these concerts and such well, on the internet. They need a donation button. I have a lot and if you like what you're hearing, and they're on like Spotify or something like that, where you can buy their music to download, don't just settle for for listening to the stuff you're getting free, folks. You know, spend that few bucks to buy because, again, they, they they need our support. Either that or we're going to have to wait for the 1% to pick out who are going to be their court musicians. You know, and we'll be back in the feudal ages. And I, don't, and I don't think if you like real music, if you like the creativity of modern music, I don't think you're going to be happy going back to the feudal, to the Middle Ages. No, well, I don't think so either. America is polluted by the major labels. The major labels create an image that they want to create. They feel that's needed. They pick the songs. They produce it the way they want it produced, not the way the artist envisions it at all. And they shove it down your throat and they play it for 48 weeks. And if you don't like it, you better learn to like it because that's all you're going to hear on these major stations, which is why I heart and the rest of them are going into bankruptcy because people just don't want to hear it. No. You go to Europe, hear the life of the song is 48 weeks on radio. But you go over to Europe or the BBC or somewhere overseas, the life is two to three months. And here, the hits are chosen by who pays the most in promotion. Where the BBC is an example and other examples of other radio networks they play a song, the audience votes on it, and if they like it, they add it to the playlist. They go by the audience's reaction, not... How it should be. You know, no. you know something, Stephen? We're actually talking the politics behind the music and behind the radio. And I, I want to acknowledge that, that if you believe in creativity, if you believe in encouraging individual artists again you know then all of a sudden 
we're talking democracy. We're talking real democracy. And, you know, whether we're voting by which brand of ice cream we buy or by which music we want to listen to or whatever, it's the idea that we as people are empowered to let our voices be heard as opposed to money being heard. Real creators of music and real people that create great lyrics and great music don't do it for money. They don't do it for fame. It's something within them that they just do, and they would do it and whether they had an audience or didn't. They would do it, it just comes out. And music is supposed to create emotion within people that makes them smile, makes them cry, makes them feel something. And this cookie cutter stuff, I mean, I hear it on the radio and I've seen so many trends over the decades that people get on this or try to emulate this artist or that artist. And What a that, mistake that is. Yeah. Well, you know, we were sitting at a studio in St. Augustine, Florida. This was several years ago and there was Stan Lynch from Tom Petty there. Tom Petty happened to be there and I think Don Henley was there too. And we were talking about musicians that come into the studio and they all say, now, what do I got to do to make a deal? What do I got to do to get a deal? How do I need to change my music? We all looked at each other and That's laughed. Sad. When we started to make music, there's no way we would change anything. We did it our way. And if you didn't want to listen, we stuck up our middle finger and said, don't listen. We don't care. This is our music. Either like it or don't listen. And people now, I mean, they just need to create what's inside of them and what comes out. And don't try to emulate and make it sound like somebody else or sound popular or whatever they think it's going to be because that's not how you're going to get popular. No. And it's up to the rest of us. It's up to the rest of us then to look for this, to find these people and support these people because you're not going to be, you, you know, it's all very well and good, and you're right. I mean, I write poetry because I love to write poetry. I wrote prose, prose because I love, but I still want my books to sell. Thankfully, I can have survived without selling them because, you know, I have other income. But for a lot of artists, you know, it, it, they really need that support, folks. Yeah, but if they're doing it for income. Here's the deal. I mean, if people weren't creating, they caved in else was doing there'd be no bob dylan there'd be no johnny cash there would be no leonard skinner no tom petty because they would have caved in and sounded like somebody else right they did it their way well, and people really want to hear i think well, people that, are tired. That, that a little tribute to frank sinatra there too yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think people are tired of artificial music I well, think they're sick of it United States is so so taken over by major labels and what they push on you. If you go over to Europe and other places of the world, people want to hear acoustic sets. They want to hear it raw. They want to hear real. And they'll pay $25 all day long to hear an unknown. Mm -hmm. But venues used to pay decent money before the 2008 economic crash here. But now, for a band, they're lucky to get Three hundred dollars for a band. See, that's uh, crazy. No kidding. It's, it's absolutely crazy. crazy. They might have to bust tables after the set too. I know. Exactly. Isn't that terrible? Exactly. But I mean, they used to pay good money, and people. It, it's nice to go and hear a band do classic rock songs or the top forty. But I mean, people in the United States, people overseas, they don't want to hear cover songs. They want to. hear no original stuff stuff that moves them or stuff that they might get into of course the way of life is different than ours too they're not as harried not as hurried and they can take the time to enjoy life where i mean we're all working two jobs just to yeah, stay alive and, yeah most people are i think unfortunately that are in the industry and that's a if sad have, thing if you have a job these days so yeah yeah if you can work from home lucky you yeah. what are, the things what I'm are you concerned doing, about? Stephen, um, as far as, you know, dealing with the virus and the limitations it puts on, are you thinking of new ideas to present the artists or even your own work? Well, I've always had new ideas that got kiboshed because of the way the system. 
now it's cut out because people want to hear raw music. I mean, I got a friend, Brian Iannucci, that I've got several co-writes with. He's a PhD, an online professor, but he's, he plays a great piano and he writes songs and he's good. He's been doing concerts from his house and he's so into it now, he just loves it, doing the once a week shows. And once these people start doing it, they get a following. And people love to hear the raw music. They don't want to just hear the produced version. So musicians, if you're sitting at home doing nothing, do a weekly podcast, do a weekly Facebook, whatever, but do it raw. Don't try to produce it. Do it like you wrote it. And you'll gain more fans over a time period than you will any other way. And people will love you. And, you know, and listeners, if you're being entertained by this, Tip them decently. Don't just stream their music. I mean, tip them. Yes. They need it. It's well, important. You know, you know the, 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 music. the other part of this, folks, is if you are a musician and you are trying to use the internet to reach out to the world, one of the things I realize is a lot of people don't know how to do that. They, they, they just keep doing the same thing over and over. And the real trick is finding other people, finding people who are going to support you. I mean, that's one of the things that, for example, at Matters Radio is about, is supporting people, getting word out. We try and find talent. Reach out, ask your friends on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, all of the social media to help get the word out that you're when you're performing. You know, uh, one of the things that amazes me is that people don't realize that marketing is part of the job. Now, if you're very lucky and you have somebody like Stephen Wrench supporting you and helping you, you get a leg up because he'll guide you how to how to do that marketing a little better. But folks, you've got to get the word out. The other thing I, I'm concerned about, though, is uh, that a lot of people feel pressure to now get back, get into the clubs, get to the bar, start performing. Yes, Stephen, and, what do you think about that? Yeah. Well, I have a good friend that's an actor, Tom Proctor, and if you Google him, you'll you'll recognize him. And he has a good friend that is a MMA fighter and a stuntman that's 30 years old that died of the coronavirus. Mm. So no matter how good a shape you're in, you're susceptible to it. And I think that I've watched these states, even in partial reopenings, they've got triple the cases in a week. Yes. Give it two or three weeks, they'll all be shutting down. And getting in a crowded place, to me, is the stupidest thing you could do. And whether you're a good marketeer or not, if you do something live and do it raw on Facebook, if you have one listener that you impress, they're going to tell 20 of their friends. So the next you're going to have 20 people watching. And they're going to tell 20 more of their friends. Then you have 400 people watching. And it'll snowball. So whether you're great on social media or not, just do it. Do it for yourself. I mean, isn't that why you create and play music anyhow for yourself? Exactly. If that's not why you do it, you need to get another job and stop. Yeah. Because so, that's not what you want to hear. Maybe they could also um, get together in their own communities. Yeah, I mean, I've seen people that are having concerts from their driveway. Uh, I've got a friend in Rome that had one from his balcony, and he had many, many people listen, and he had, I think, 10,000 people watching on Facebook. Really many at him, right? But then after about eight concerts, he had about 10,000. Yeah. Because one person told another person because he was that good. Mm was honest and it was great scenery and it was just you know the whole setting was good you know people do it from their living rooms and that's great but it'd be nice if you could do it from an outside setting I mean, yes pick a stranded or abandoned park somewhere somewhere out in the middle of nowhere and you don't need the microphones you don't need that no. just do it raw and do it off an iphone is fine that works but yeah, if you do it from that way and you, and you get it up on, on something like YouTube and people will hear about you and get, watch it. And again, then try and get other people to, you know, I agree with Stephen that, that 
you know, it's like, actually, it's like COVID-19. You know, one person infects the next. <laughs> but yeah, with, with really getting is. the word out, you want more. But do ask people. Ask people to help get the word out about you and build that audience. Exactly. But please, please don't do it live because, you know, just to follow up on, on what we were talking about, the danger of this, it, it isn't just the danger now. It's that we don't know what the long-term danger, and if you're a musician, you know, you have to be able to breathe, you have to have good blood, uh, you know, pumping. To I get this. Know the long-term effect of those organs uh, of this particular virus. is some pretty nasty things happening from it. And, you know, if you're up there and you're trying to play the drums and you're going like this and all of a sudden you, <gasps> you can't breathe, and there goes your rhythm. You know, so it's serious and it, people it take it seriously. Very seriously. Surgeon that told me that uh, they're finding that people, even three months after they had the virus and they're supposedly cured, they have a 30 to 40 percent decrease in lung capacity, a decrease in their kidney function, right. heart functions. So they right. don't. Well, what no one understands, Stephen, about this is it travels through your body, it's not like, you know, just a virus, you know, you cough a few times and you're sick for a week and it's over with. This one actually, it could, it could all of a sudden your legs start hurting or your kidneys start hurting. It affects the organs in your body. And well, until the artists, artists need to do that in their music, create a pandemic. Okay. And one person infects another. So yeah. get one liking it. And they'll tell many more. Just create your own pandemic. And for God's sake, do it for yourself. Exactly. I mean, if nobody's watching, then so nobody's watching. One person may catch it, or they'll catch it the next day on Facebook, and they'll tell another. Do it every week. Mm -hmm. You can make money the off pandemic of Pandemic of music, yes. Exactly. <laughs> but real music, or organic music, not produced overproduced stuff. How about, a, instead of a real thing. how about instead of a pandemic, we call it a panforium. That, that works for me. Yeah, I love it. I love that name. That I works. want to talk a little bit about you though, Stephen. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that you are a singer songwriter yourself because you're always, of course, pushing your artists. I'm so happy that you are starting to concentrate on yourself a little bit. Yeah, my wife. I used to just play on my back porch and didn't give a crap. And I played with so many people from Leonard Skinner to Tommy Two Tone to you name it. The groups are endless. And, you know, it never was about my stuff. And that was kind of a sideline. And I've decided, okay, it's time. I'm 69 years old. Let's push it. I've got an upcoming performance on CBS, June the 20th. I've got one the 22nd on Hallmark. I've got some other ones coming up for The Tonight Show and a few other places that actually like my music. So of course I they do. Your lyrics touch everybody. That's one thing I've noticed about them. It, it'd be like, I'm a, when I hear your lyrics and your music, I go, I can relate to that. I know exactly what he's talking about. You know, whether it's something that's in fun or it's something that's just a tearjerker. Well, and you know, Monica, I, I think we should mention at this point that at the, after the interview, you know, stay tuned on, on It Matters Radio, folks, because we are going to have a Stephen Wrench song. And which song are we playing today? Life's a sham. <laughs> Which yeah. epitomizes yeah. today. So yeah. I created this music about a year ago, and I kind of liked it and played with it, but didn't have any lyrics. And one day, five minutes, it just all came to me. It's like, okay, that's it. I love it. I like it. So let's do it. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people like Bob Dylan. He used to look at his audience and research it. And what can I write? And even his style was all researched. For me, I mean. I got stuff from rock to folk to you name it, and you do. It, it's just what comes out. That's it. And people okay. know that they can tell when it's true and when it's just put on. And people should not try to be somebody else. They need to be who they are, and that's it. That's what the audiences and the fans connect with. 
Yes, we've, been doing, we've been doing something a little unusual of late with It Matters Radio, which is that sometimes we've been asking our guests to send us something else during the week so that we can put it up. So, folks, I'm going to tell you, we've already asked Stephen, we're not going to tell you anything about the song that we're putting up later this week. We're just going to tell you, come back, because you're going to want to hear it. And we're going to also tell you that it's a new song. So it's not something you've heard before. Well, I, I think we that closer to Father's Day. Okay. Because we've got quite a few well. already. So it'll be more towards June. But okay. um, that's Album. not that far away. Yeah. I recorded this album in the middle of February, which is probably the last time anybody went to Nashville. So <laughs> I had some great people playing on it. And I really like it. It's a mishmash of acoustic to produce. It's just all over the place. And typical me, I guess. So but there's a lot of new songs on it. Uh, yeah, what I like, like you said, Stephen, you can, you write songs. They just come to you. And yeah, or people tell me, someone tells me a story. If you were to tell me a story, I could write you a song in 15 minutes. But the more detail somebody gives me, the better I am at writing the story. Yes. I had an artist from the UK who was a model that I produced recently that was telling me stories. I gave her co-writes, but I mean, I wrote the words and the music, but I wouldn't have wrote them without the stories. One of them was called Hometown Ghost Town. Yeah, which is very relevant today. So, yes. Good song. Where can uh, they find your music? If they, you know, because I, I hope people are interested now in Stephen Wrench as the artist. Well, stephenwrench.com. I probably got 30 or 40 songs up there on my website. You can listen to, or you can go to any iTunes, Spotify, whatever. There's a bunch of them up there. I mean, I've got a lot of songs that Leonard Skinner literally was the band and the demo band yes <laughs> that are all my songs demos so you know once i create them i don't go back and spend months you know i've watched henley go in and <clears throat> i have a friend jim devito that works with don henley and met him several times and he would spend i remember what well, that one song forgiveness heart of the matter he heart spent the matter, yeah. 12 weeks mixing the one song 12 weeks wow and that's mm -hmm. a long time I mean, I'll create it, and I'll mix it in an hour, two hours. I'm done. I'm, a, I'm already wrote five more onto those. <laughs> That's why when I'm performing, I have to have a lyric sheet in front of me because I never remember it. I've already written 20 other ones by that time. So, so Stephen, are you, besides going to Stephen Wrench, and I, I want to spell that, folks, before I uh, ask the question. Yeah, it's S-T-E-P-H-E-N. W R E N C H dot com, Stephen Wrench dot com. And we'll have it below yep. the podcast also so people can easily find that but link. People also, are you also doing what you've recommended, which is Facebook concerts? Or? No, I haven't done any. <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, I think some of these know. managers need to get together and pull I'm any resources anymore. I mean, I'll give people advice, Monica, but I'm not. Managing it. I mean, I've met Jesus, so many people. Tommy Tutone, Leonard Skinner, Total, Loverboy. Yes. Done managing. I'm, I'm concentrating on the radio promotions, which I can get people heard all over the world, and on my own music. That's, That's about wonderful. it. But you know, time. you're on Facebook concerts on you know, spread your music. Well, I think that's good. And, and these young artists that want to get heard out there, and I'm 69 years old, and to me, I do it for me anyhow, and I'm happy. I'm happy finally I got major national TV appearances that will be doing my own music acoustically, and that's what I wanted. I placed it in a bunch of music and a bunch of TV shows, and a couple of movies, and I'm happy. So that's, that's the way all. it should be. I, I'm so I'm happy because I've been wanting you to do that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, my wife encouraged me to do that. So. Yeah, we love your wife, Rhonda. Yes. Okay, well, I think it's about time that we listen to some music from this very talented artist, Stephen Wrench. And yep. with that, we're going to say goodbye. And I, we 
Kenneth, I hope you'll come back again sometime because this is continuing and we'll see how everything evolves. <laughs> anytime, uh, again, Kenneth, anytime. Yeah, well, you know, and it doesn't have to be the same topic either. We can okay. make something up. Like maybe. Well, we could go to Two Toed Sloth because as a kid, I wanted to order one from South America. I saved up on my allowance, but my parents wouldn't let me. I was fascinated by them. So, oh. I've been trying to get the, I've been trying to get the Sloth Conservancy to let us do a show, you know, do a show with us. But they they're very protective. I see. <laughs> with that, folks, we're going to say goodbye, and we want you to enjoy this next song by Stephen Wrench. Life's a sham. There you go, folks. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Sometimes I think that life's a shame Cause I'll never be nothing but who I am And I won't lay down with my head in the clouds I don't dare speak what I feel out loud I never mind oh, my P's and Q's And I don't leave behind a word I have used What's right? Oh, I don't have a clue Just gotta do what you gotta do Sometimes I think that life's a sham Cause I'll never be nothing but who I am I've had so many promises that fell to the floor So many people came in and out of that door I get confused, oh I'm tired of being used but I just keep knowing that I'm gonna lose What's right? Oh, I don't have a clue You just gotta do what you gotta do I'm hoping life won't continue to be a sham One day I'm gonna get up and know who I am I'm gonna grab the world by the balls I'm gonna squeeze life until I got it all Then I think that I do anything I wanna do Just because I can, oh and so can you What's right? Oh, I don't have a clue You just gotta do what you gotta do You just gotta do what you gotta do